All right, let's get this show on the road. Hello, hello and welcome to Accidental Origin. My name is Brendan. This is your weekly writing web show, now daily for this week only. Um, what's going on? Hey, question. How's it going, man? Uh, we're going to continue with drafting week. We're going to keep doing our thing and work on a new scene and aim for five to eight hundred words and uh, just just get get as much of this done as we can. Man, I've already written almost 2,000 words on this. I'm super happy. It's been a productive week. Now, if only I stopped slacking after I was done streaming. <laughs> And, and worked on my other project a little bit more. That would that would be excellent. I would love that. Yeah. Uh, and for those of you, um, for those of you who are curious, I will be posting uh, the final draft. Or like the the total first draft uh, on my website by the end. Um, I'm gonna do an update in the writing and short story section as well as uh, under the drafting week uh, topic on there. Um, you'll be able to see that at the end of the week. I didn't want to do it every day. Um, just a lot of work keeping up <laughs> um, and all that. So yeah. Uh, Oh my god, Twitch has an HDMI 5 player beta for turbo users? Oh my god, I might sign up for turbo just for that. That sounds so awesome. Like, I, you, you have no idea how excited that makes me. Because if you haven't noticed, and you probably know a little bit more than some of the others do question, but because you worked on the internet, but HTML5 is a vastly superior to Flash. Flash is outdated, it's not supported anymore. Um, so, really excited about that. Really excited. I know, right? I mean, it's only a beta, so it's not it's not 100% out there, but oh my god. <laughs> All right, is exciting. Okay. Now that you've all looked at my nerd haircut for long enough, let's get this show on the road. Okay, you are working. Yeah, well, that's because Flash, like, 
Flash hasn't had a major update in probably almost a year to a year and a half, maybe two. Like, Flash is not supported. Uh, there's no such software as Adobe Flash anymore. Adobe's changed to Adobe Animate. Uh, it has a lot of the same functions, but it's not in effect Flash. It's better for HTML5. It uses vectors, like... But yeah, HTML5 is vast, vastly superior. Vastly superior. I decided to listen to music today, but not on the stream. You guys listen to whatever music you want to listen to. <laughs> Again, because of copyright and things like that, not because... Uh, not because of other things. I need to start this scene differently. Pretty much every scene uh, I've written so far basically starts with uh, Hyperanor like staring at something from off in the distance because he's super suspicious. Maybe I'll split this scene in the middle and need my keywords here. Hey Ed, what's up? Yeah, I did like a nerd comb over today with my hair.
I said I trimmed it. I actually trimmed it. <laughs> Not really. Like, the last time I shaved was, or got a trim, was June 1st. Whenever I did my logo reveal thing. Doing okay. I was watching sumo wrestling this morning, which was kind of awesome. Uh, like, I was really into it. <laughs> it was super interesting. Uh, yeah. Also, I'm listening to music today, but I'm not staring it on the stream for copyright reasons. It's an experiment. Yeah, it's an experiment. I'm trying it out. I just kind of felt like it today. It also, it's raining and I'm so happy. <laughs> and I won't be going outside at all today. <laughs> Is it like metal music? Uh, no, right now I'm listening to the band Perry. <laughs> uh, who's a country band. Uh, but it, I'm listening to a writer's playlist. Yeah, so they're like, there's this playlist about writing. Uh, so it's like songs about writing. It's really weird, but I kind of like it. It's got some good stuff on there. <laughs> it's on Spotify if you want to look it up.
Oh, Andrani, I'm so excited that they have the HTML5 beta out for turbo users. That's going to be... If they're doing that, that means that they're they're like not too far away from, from releasing it site-wide. And uh, it's going to be awesome. I'm actually... Like, I'm legitimately really, really tempted to get a turbo account just for that feature. Because I don't get ads, so... <laughs> Why can't you use Spotify? I thought you totally have a Spotify account. Don't I have you on Spotify? <laughs> I am confused. I'll put the link in here anyway. If people want to check it out. That's really weird, Johnny. I don't use uh, the web browser one. I use the the software. Obviously not. Too bad, Ronnie. That's too bad. Uh, what did I want? Oh, right. I'm feeling a little, uh, <laughs> a little all over the place today. Not a bad way. Just, just a little distracted.
full 10 minutes, what are you going to do? Ah, here we go. This is what I was looking for. I want to look at this later. My computer restarted last night, so I like was missing some stuff that I wanted to look at. No, it's it's stuff I meant to look at yesterday and didn't because I took a vacation for my computer. Which was still a good idea. I also think it's a little bit just I'm unsure what I want to do with this scene. If I, if I hadn't watched that sumo wrestling... <laughs> Hey, McKelly, what's up, man? Man, I'm so excited for you for that that internship. Like, legit. Like, I'm, I'm, like, very jealous and very excited. Yeah, the, the problem is I think this scene is necessary and I have a general idea of what I want to happen. I'm just not sure how I want it to happen. Like maybe I just need to jump down and write the end first. It's a good thing to note though. Uh, for all you aspiring writers, I'm looking at you, Ed. Uh, um, you don't have to write it in linear order. <laughs> in fact, you probably shouldn't. Uh, but you have the option to if you want. To be fair, I've been more productive in the last 23 minutes than I have been in the last uh, hour and 20 minutes I was yesterday. And I still got 500 words done, so, you know. I don't know if this is true of art, but of, uh, of writing, I find it's very momentum-based. So, like, like, you start rolling slowly. And you get a few words down, and then you get a few more, and a few more, and then it starts coming to you, and... I call you E.T. And I totally didn't even go to the Twilight thing, so, like, whatever. That's all on you, Johnny. All on you. It's, uh, it's felt, it's felt like this, Michele. Or like this. I'll turn this off. I turned off the music. That's actually a good question. When are you streaming? I want to know.
Johnny is an excellent streamer when she streams, which is not consistent. <laughs> She participates in a lot of art posse challenges, challenges herself, does a lot of studies. Uh, she's done some work for me uh, for a couple of the projects I've worked on on stream. Um, <laughs> you act like that's that'll annoy me, Jorani. Couple of girls at work call me Brendone. Tisk. 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 You shouldn't have said anything, Ronnie. You should have you should have PM'd me. <laughs> should know better. Should know better. You are correct. You would you would be correct. One hundred percent true. One hundred percent true. Language simplification, it's totally a thing. How did they even get captured? I don't even know. God. You know that's not true, Drani. Whatever. I thought you would enjoy having your own personalized nickname. Call you DE. <laughs> okay. But Ed's awesome, because Ed's from Cowboy Bebop.
Doesn't, uh, isn't DE a country prefix? Like, yeah. Well, you're, oh, you know, never mind. Fine. Fine. God, I don't even want to know what McCallie has under his bed. It's probably not not good things. <laughs> oh. This monitor is so hot. Oh. Yeah, I stretch a lot. I think it's important to stretch. Uh, also, um, uh, there's a long history of arthritis in my family, uh, so my joints are very stiff, uh, so I try and stretch and move uh, a lot. I know it's not necessarily the same as getting up and doing like full stretches, but I, I try to actually like, you know, move my joints, move my elbows, wrists, um, stuff like that. It's good for you. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a medical doctor and I haven't done a ton of research in it, but I just know that my joints get stiff uh, if I stay in the same position for too long. So I tend to move around and stretch a lot and get it out and it makes, it makes my ligaments and joints feel much better. Um, so I don't know if that's an actual thing, but I find it helps. I should actually look into that. Um, a good point. I don't have arthritis, by the way. Uh, I just, it runs in my family. Uh, and considering how stiff I can be, uh, I try and stay as loose as possible by stretching. Also, if you're doing any heavy computer use, you should stretch. Um, that's an actual thing. Uh, something I learned from day nine, uh, but almost all like pro gamers do it, uh, especially StarCraft pro gamers, because there are things like APM. But you should be doing uh, wrist wrist stretches uh, and all that before before doing heavy sessions. 
Uh, I'm not the greatest about doing it before. I tend to do it during, uh, but I do do it on a regular basis. Um, helps a lot. Because um, again, I mean, repetitive movements, that's how you get repetitive stress injuries, uh, carpal tunnel, all that kind of stuff. So you should be stretching. Uh, if you can keep your hands warm, uh, that's better. I know that's not always 100% possible, though, but if you can keep your hands warm, that helps. Uh, the colder they get, the stiffer they're going to be. Um, and it's when they're stiff like that that, they, that damage is caused. So, you know, there are things. Depends. Just depends. Um, a good investment, Johnny, would be to get one of those reusable um, little hand warmer packets. I have one. I don't use it uh, that much because my hands don't get cold. Uh, mostly because my room is almost never cold. Uh, it's pretty rare that my room would be cold. Uh, but yeah, you can get reusable ones that you can heat up in the microwave. Uh, and having something like that close by uh, is, is always awesome. Uh, especially if you're going to be drawing and, and stuff like that. It's going to help a lot. The feet thing I can't do much about. You're on, you're on with the feet thing. Wear, wear, wear big socks. That being said, if it's in both your extremities, that probably means you have poor blood, uh, poor circulation. Which sucks. Poor circulation is, is always rough. Because there's not a ton you can do about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's, but that's true of all humans to a certain extent. Um, your body, your body will keep your heat in the places that matter more than other places for sure. Uh, same with oxygen, uh, and all that, like, there's a reason your brain is last to shut down uh, in scenarios and stuff. Huh. I didn't know that. But then again, I don't have poor circulation. I'm generally a furnace. And also very temperate like very uh my body temperature doesn't fluctuate a ton uh based on weather uh, like i stay pretty warm in the cold and fairly cool in the warmth compared to most people um, yes that's what i'm saying look at that A furnace is what heats your house. Oh wait, you're in Europe. You probably don't have a furnace. Um, you probably have radiators. Yep. 
It's also why you sweat so much from your head. Because your head is always warm. Uh, it's also why you should... Um, uh, if you're warm in the winter, you should always wear your hat and open your jacket. Uh, so that your overall body temperature, like if your core... If, if your core is hot, it'll heat everything else. But if your core is cold, it'll it'll protect itself a little bit more. Um, but yeah, if you're you don't want to take your hat off because that'll make your head cold and there'll be so much sweat and whatever else, and it'll it'll still take from your core, so you're still going to be cold, uh, but much worse for you. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know what time. Like, my mom's been a nurse for like. 40 years and my brother works at the hospital as a, a porter like there's tons of medical people in my family there's a couple more nurses my aunt is really high up in the uh irish health board uh i don't know i don't remember what that's called uh so like i'm surrounded by medical people who know a ton of things but i'm not great about it Keep in mind, like anyone on Twitch, like I only have my own knowledge set, uh, and I can't. Derek was talking about this earlier, like, trust your instincts, do your research. What I say is not necessarily 100% correct. Um, I can just be spouting my mouth off. And in this case, I probably am. <laughs> I hate radiators so much. Radiators suck. Furnaces are much better. Uh, you don't tend to see furnaces in Europe, though, uh, as much. Probably on newer houses. Um, but yeah, because you have to have like a space to do it in. And not a ton of houses in Europe have basements either. Uh, in almost all the places uh, here that have furnaces, it's in the basement. Out of the way. Two furnaces? Really? Wow. They must be small, or they must be um, on different circuits, maybe? That's really strange. <laughs> uh, gods. Oh. interesting yeah it sounds like they would be on different uh different ventilation circuits circuits well see apartment buildings probably do have a general furnace um that would make a lot more sense but it could be just that you have radiators in each apartment it depends on the apartment building And, and you you know most furnaces are not powered by wood, by the way. <laughs> I mean, there are people who have wood furnaces, yes. Uh, I know some people who do. My furnace is not wood. My furnace is natural gas. Uh, there's quite a few that are electricity. Yeah, that's that's why they would be so much smaller, Michele. 
Uh, it takes a lot more heat uh, to power to power a wood furnace. They tend to only be for like a couple rooms or one floor. Oh yeah, I didn't know that, Johnny. Because I know in Ireland, like nobody has basements, <laughs> or not very many people anyway. I spelled this wrong, didn't I? I did too. Yeah, I got it now. Excellent. All right, Michele, take care, buddy. Keep me updated. I want to know. <laughs> awesome, Johnny. Congrats. <sighs> yeah, uh, I gotta think about this again. Where's my where's my note paper? Studio mode and check. Oh. Ugh. Making a mess. Doing things live again. Someone stop me. <laughs> yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean, Johnny.
Oh yeah, sure. Let's let's try this out. Uh, I need a pen. Where did my pen go? It's in my pocket. Uh, I gotta think about this a little bit. Um, I'm gonna pull up my thing here. Uh, it might be too early to do this, but uh, I think it's necessary because I'm so I'm struggling right now with kind of the ordering of scenes and stuff. Um, Yeah, I love this shirt. Um, it's a Rage Against the Machine shirt. I bought it in Ireland when I was 13. That's right, I bought this when I was 13. Was this when I was 13? Was this the time I went when I was 18? No, I think this was when I was 13. I think I bought this when I was 13. I don't remember. I don't remember. Um, yeah, sorry. I'm just, I'm just thinking, um, I'm just thinking of my, my plot again. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to do two here, I think. Uh, so, we got our... Sighting incident. Uh, HPR hired for a job. Fights the siren. Yes, yes, it is a rubber band on my wrist. 
I, yeah. I think this is about, I think I've been wearing this for like a week, two weeks. I forget. Happens a lot. Strike. I have an idea. Um, I'm gonna finish outlining this first, though, uh, just to have get it all. Okay, but why it sounds uncomfy? Uh, it's really not. Uh, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. Um, it's because I I had a uh, wristband that uh, one of my friends made for me. Uh, but it broke. Uh, I lost it one night uh, at work. Uh, and I kind of feel naked not having a thing on it. Because I wore it for almost, uh, almost probably close to a year. Um, so yeah. Gabo to strike. Uh... HPR and Siren follow yeah I was really sad about it well I wasn't that sad about it but I was sad about it Uh, what was I thinking? Get captured somehow. Ritual starts. Yeah. Sad face. I don't know. I think she's going to make me a new one uh, this summer. I hope so. I really liked it. Oh, I didn't even know you asked that question. Interesting you should ask that question. Uh, it depends on what your type of comic book. Uh, because... Uh, well, I'll go back to the face cam for a bit while I answer the question. Uh, it depends on what type of comic book. Uh, because things like graphic novels, for example, aren't going to be super relevant. That being said, a 24-page comic is essentially a short story uh, in a lot of ways. The structure is a little different. Uh, it's not 100% the same, especially if you're doing something with more of an ongoing story or character arcs. Um, but, but think about it this way. Every comic uh, has a beginning, middle, and end. Uh, even if it's in a larger structure. Um, and in a lot of ways, a, a, a comic series is a series, is a several short stories joined together to create a larger whole. It depends. It depends on the comic. It depends on your writing style. It depends on a few things. Uh, I think writing a short story is... Uh, is a solid way to, to get the concepts of story writing under your belt, where you don't have to worry about writing a novel. Novels are hard. Uh, I've attempted to write two or three novels, I, I think. The most I ever did was about 15,000 words. Um, I've written 2,000 words this week. 
So you, I spent all that time planning and working on novels, and I only got that far. Like, they, they are difficult. They are really difficult. That being said, 18,000 words, that's a novella. Which is a shorter version of a novel. And it's easier to accomplish. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, and you can do some cool things where you do, um, like four to six page stories and have like two to four of them in a book. Um, I've seen that a lot, like a bunch of shorts within, with a single issue. Um, not as common as it used to be, but it is, it is something you could do. I mean, that's how, uh, I can show you a thing. I don't need these on anyway. I'm not listening to music. Skull Kickers. Uh, Written by Jim Zub, uh, drawn by Edwin Huang. Uh, yeah. And Chris Stevens, I forgot about him. But yeah, Edwin, Edwin Huang is the main artist. Uh, if I flip to the back here, and I can't show you a ton of this because it's... Uh, is it in this one? Yes, it was in this one. So this is a comic, an indie, yeah, it's gorgeous. Uh, I have the second one as well. Um, this is an indie comic book uh, written by Canadian Jim Zub, who lives in Toronto, uh, teaches animation at Seneca uh, College, uh, one of the better colleges for animation in the country. Um, so he's also like an illustrator and artist and all that, but he does a lot of writing. Uh, and this is his cool fantasy parody hilarity whatever it is um that i actually really identify with uh stylistically where it's got uh let's see if i can find a good example uh that's not violent because <laughs> there's a lot of violence um Yeah, I love things like, uh, you see there? Using, using sound effects to indicate the action. <laughs> uh, I love stuff like that. But yeah, um, this actually has uh, the original five issues, which were, um, or after the original five issues, they had a bunch of short stories in a single issue, uh, which is what is described here. Uh, so that's like... Uh, Four Tavern Tales, Two Pieces of Copper, uh, just, you know, four to six pages, short stories. Um, I think any sort of storytelling translates to a visual medium. Uh, I think scripting a visual medium is different. Um, I have worked on comics. I love working on comics. Um, it's a it's a whole it's a different thing. Um, I get like what was my point in all that? <laughs> so storytelling is storytelling, no matter what medium it's in. The interesting thing about using a visual medium means that you should be using the visuals to tell the story more than text. For example, uh, you're not going to describe what a scene looks like. You're going to show what a scene looks like, like literally on the page. You're not going to have to describe an action. You're going to show the action. Um, so in, a, in, in effect, uh, things like 
plot, character, uh, conflict, theme, setting, all these things that you're learning uh, that I've talked about and, and have kind of been teaching in a way, those are all essential elements to any type of story, whether it's a film, whether it's a novel, whether it's a, gra a graphic novel, like whatever. Those are always going to be relevant. Um, so, so any storytelling technique that you've picked up can be used. Uh, but it's a matter of how effective are certain, are certain techniques in certain mediums. Um, right? Uh, I, hope, I, I hope that made sense. I hope that made sense. And if you do have anything you want me to look at questions, just let me know. Uh, I, I would be happy to take a look for you. I won't do it on stream, uh, but I would I would take a look. Um, yeah, for sure. So uh, I hope I hope that helps. I hope that describes something. Ritual ends. Yeah, um, that's, that's pretty much what I'm saying. Uh, because there are things you can do in comics that you can't do in film, and there are things that you can do in, uh, in novels that you can't do in either film or comics, and there's things, like, it depends. Uh, the, the best example I can think of, uh, and this is kind of something I, I really want to experiment with, uh, and have been wanting to experiment with for a long time. But in comics, if someone's off screen, you can't tell who that person is. Like if they're talking and the, the text bubbles like coming out from the screen. I can show you an example. Uh, I'll do it on a new page. Uh, like if you have a panel Draw a panel here. I'll I'll show this like I'll put it up to the camera so you can see it a little better. Uh, in the in the panel like the dialogue bubbles like this, like coming from off screen. That's a horrible dialogue bottle bubble. Wow, I failed at this horribly. Look at my art skills, guys. My art skills. Um, if you have something like this with someone speaking off panel you can't tell who that is unless their dialogue is yeah ex exactly fault or speech patterns but but comics what they tend to do uh, at least marvel and dc and that kind of stuff is that they'll use it they'll use something like this at the end of a comic to give it a cliffhanger and it's impossible to tell who this is if it's a new character or someone who hasn't been in the comic for a long time or is a crossover or stuff like that. Uh, whereas in a film, you if you have someone off screen who's speaking, you can usually tell their gender or uh, you might be able to, to identify their voice or something. Um, it's, it's much harder to, to hide those things in film. In a novel, uh, it's a completely different thing. Right? Like it, it's different. I wouldn't do that by the way. I think that's kind of hokey. Uh, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't do something like that. Uh, but I agree with you. I, I would like, I think it'd be really cool to do an experiment with like fonts and certain things where you could almost, you could identify every character by that, the way that their speech bubble is and like certain things. Like 
I would love to do some experiments with that. Uh, I wish I could draw <laughs> so I could do that. Uh, God, I probably didn't need any of these boxes, but whatever. Uh, I really wish Stevie was here. A, because she would be able to totally weigh in on the comic thing. And B, because I need her advice. Or actually, if Erica was here, that'd be cool too. She'd probably know. Hmm. Yeah, this is my inciting incident. This is probably my climax somewhere around here. This would be my turning point. Uh, midpoint, I guess, would probably be better. Just thinking about structure. <laughs> no, you're not useless. It's just, uh, I need someone w with more experience than me. I guess I could ask <laughs> either way, but... Because I'm kind of thinking at this moment... Um... So this is kind of what I have, right? But I'm kind of thinking at this moment that uh, I really, I really don't think I even want to write uh, from here on. Like, I, I kind of just want to do, like, this as the story. Hey, Samuel, what's going on? Because... This seems not interesting to me. Kind of boring. Whereas this has really awesome character moments and stuff. So I'm thinking that I want to do this and just this. Hmm. Hmm. Any opinions? I know that you haven't necessarily gotten too far in the process question, but uh, have you thought about whether or not you're going to write an actual script? Or are you just going to... Um, are you just going to... Uh, draw like thumbnails or just draw straight up? There's no right answer. Uh, there are plenty of uh, writer artists who just draw and they kind of have the story in their head and they just do it. Um, but there are a lot who will script out. And, and scripting out doesn't necessarily mean you have to write out every single panel or whatever. Uh, sometimes it could just be a good, a good outline of the issue. Um, yeah, I mean, that works. I've seen artists do that. I would try, I would try writing a script just to see if it helps or not, but for sure, for sure you don't have to. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense to me. Yeah, it, and and that's and that's exactly what I was thinking. Like, 
you can't you can't know whether or not you like it or if it helps until you do it. And it totally might not help, but you should at least try it. <laughs> uh, especially because you're an artist. Um, especially because you're an artist, because you tend to think visually and um, you tend to think visually, so you think you don't need the rest. Uh, but things like dialogue, things like, um, I don't know, but that's just the example that comes to mind. Like you wouldn't necessarily have in your thumbnails as much. So being aware of those and what you want to say and, and things uh, could be super important. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. I got a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> I don't need this anymore though. Hmm. I'm just cleaning things up. Uh, Cause I actually do think I'm gonna cut most of those scenes. I think they're unnecessary. I don't think they're interesting. Um, I mean, they work. I think if I was going for something super traditional uh, like, like a movie sort of style plot, it would be perfect. But honestly, I'm not. I'm going for a short story. I'm going for that character drama. I'm going for interest. Um, and so I want, I want specific things. Uh, and the ones I've worked on so far, I've actually been very happy with. Um, a little bit here. Uh, that being said, I'm going to keep uh, one of the awesome things about using Scrivener. I'm going to keep that stuff. Uh, I'm going to toss a thing down here saying unused scenes. Uh, and I'm going to say this one. I'm on the fence about that one, but we'll see. I'm going to keep that because I'm going to use it. I'm going to keep that, I think. I think this is going to be somewhere in here. I think this is going to be there. And I think it's going to be like that. This maybe in the middle. Yeah, I think that's the way we're gonna do it. I think that's gonna be way better. Any opinions? Am I crazy? Are y'all tuning me out? <laughs> I think it'll be a stronger story overall. It doesn't mean the goblins don't get in though, which is sad. Why would I not say that, Dronny? I think you're entertaining to watch. And I think with your studies and the way that you approach it, I think you do well. Um. I think we've made a resolution, revelation, no, no. I think we've had a, a revelation, gang. I think we've had a revelation. Johnny, like most of my friends, is an artist, a visual artist and graphic designer. Like the majority of my Twitch friends.
You should. I think you should. I think it'd be interesting. Uh, cause I think you know a lot about that stuff, despite what you say. I know you're, uh, you're super into illustration and all that, but at the same time, you know, do a little bit, see what you like. Yeah, okay. I'm happy with this. So, uh, I'm, um, it's about an hour and a half in. I'm gonna take a quick break. Uh, I realize that I have not done a ton of writing, but uh, I think I needed to restructure. It wasn't sitting well with me. It wasn't sitting the, well, the way I liked it. Um, So, and uh, just for the record, Johnny, I will totally make sure that even with the cut scenes, that I actually get all of the prompts in. I will make sure. That formatting, though. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna take a five minute break. I'll be back at one thirty, uh, and I will uh, work on this more. I'm gonna. I think today I'm going to flesh out some of this backstory. Uh, maybe work a little bit on the aftermath epilogue. I have plans. Um, I write aftermath epilogue. Actually, what I think I'm gonna do for the aftermath is I'm actually going to set it up for the rest of the story like as in this was a sort of a small window into a much larger story yeah Johnny is a harsh taskmaster and not good at giving uh, constructive feedback. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a lot of what comics do. Uh, Arcs, arcs tend to be about one to six issues. Uh, and then there'll be one or two like standalones and then another arc. Um, that's not true 100% across the board, of course. Uh, the more narratively styled it is, the more the less that's likely to happen. But when you look at things like... Um, uh, like manga does that a lot where they'll have a big, a big arc where something happens and then they'll have some little filler bits like a... a visit to the beach or something like that and it's yeah yeah no problem willow have a good one yeah all right taking a break i'll see you all in about five five and ten minutes at some point at some point in the near future all right
Okay, I'm back. I'm coming back. Uh, I had a thought question uh, while I was walking around there for a sec. Um, have you ever considered doing it uh, like uh, how Hellboy is written? Where it's actually a series of mini... Uh, the It's a, a bunch of mini-series that all have internal numbering as to where they fit in the larger whole of stories. Um, super interesting. Uh, but yeah, it's like a series of mini-series. So like four, one to six issues... Um, a bunch of times. Actually, uh, they do a lot of three-issue miniseries, which is kind of an odd number, but uh, it does happen. Yeah, I know. It's it's fine. Um so just thinking about details. Okay, that sounds not bad. I'd have to see it in practice uh, to give you a better read on that. Um, but yeah, details. details. Uh, so what am I missing? So, um... got my Vive shipping info on my email there. Exciting. I'm so excited. Very excited. Uh, Google Docs, right. That's what I wanted. I did a fist pump. Whatever. Uh, what episodes did I do the prompt prompt Johnny? It was episode three, right? Yes, episode three. Perfect. I found it. Um, so of the five scenes I've kept, cardboard, random, random bits of cardboard. It's the end of this this pad of graph paper. I got another one right here though. So, fight with the siren. I'm just writing down the titles here. Uh, fight with the siren. 
meeting at the stable. Tense moment. Backstory. And uh, aftermath, I'll write down here on the bottom. Uh, okay, so um, oh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna print this page. So I'm going to mute my mic for one second there because uh, it's going to be hella loud. I realize now I should have just gone to my website and downloaded the file. <laughs> what else? Too late. Too late now. Um, uh, so I am going to my website. I can't. I can't show you this. This is fine. I want to see. Uh, see this stuff is what I want to see. Yeah, I want to see this. Okay, so no problem. My three characters appear. I got Billionaire, Siren, Kill for Hire. No problem. Uh, the Sleeping Fawn is referenced but does not appear. So that counts. I'll do an X on these ones. I'll do a... Half uh, on that one. Uh, decaying house, no problem. That's covered. King stable is covered, though I need to actually describe it as the king stable. So just uh, put that here, add detail of King Sable. So this, like what I'm doing right now, oh, I forgot about the mechanical arm. Jesus. How did I forget about the mechanical arm? It's like one of the most important parts. Right, uh, so this is uh, a mind map. I used it for brainstorming this story. I wanted to make sure I got uh, proper details in. Um, So the feather will also be referenced. That's not a problem. The ritual will be referenced. Not a problem. So we'll get that. Put that detail in. Let's 
Well, it is a mind map program. It's a web. It's a web app. So the aftermath, I think, is going to be a snapshot of the ritual at the Winter Waterfall. Uh, I think it's going to take place like right in the middle of that scene. Uh, it's not going to show the entirety of the scene. Uh, it's more just going to be a snapshot to kind of bring it all together. So that will have that, this, that. Um, yeah, it's gonna kind of be the demon is released. Uh, Hyperanor charges sort of scenario. Which is awesome. Uh, so the only things I'm missing then at this point or the Goblin Raiders, the Leather Boots. And uh, freeze, put your hands in the air. Oh, I got it. I got this. No problem. We are good. Yeah, no, I got this. I got this. Uh... Cool, we're good. We're good. That makes sense. That make all makes sense. So yeah, I will get every prompt in. Uh, all the backstory playing I did will be useful. Um, perfect. We're good. I feel better. I feel like we're more on track. So um, if you've ever heard me talk about process in the last little while, which I think a few of you have, um, you'll know that I say that process is very mutable. It's something, um, it's, it's something that you adapt. Uh, it's something that's not necessarily uh, true. Like it's, it's different for everyone. Um, So there's certainly that. Um, but what I've kind of done here is I've said, well, I had this plan and it was a good plan. But then I got into the writing and I was like, you know what? It wasn't a good plan. So I revised it. I sat down and said, hey, so what, what do I um, do? what do I want? What works, what doesn't work? And so I cut all those extra scenes. And then I said, well, you know, I've done all this planning. I know what my world is like. So I can use those details to inform the scenes that I am keeping. Um, I'm not getting rid of that stuff. That stuff's all going to still happen in, in the, the scheme. It's going to be referenced. It's just not going to be like actively depicted, um, which I think is the important part. Because I'm focused, right now I'm focused on character. I'm focused on uh, getting to know the monsters. Why they're monsters, how they feel about it, how people feel about them. Uh, that's what I'm trying to capture. What it means to be a monster. 
and I think going with like kind of that film style whatever is not great. It doesn't work well for what I'm trying to do. Um, so yeah. Uh, I don't go on our writing prompts very much, mostly because I don't need writing prompts a ton. Uh, so I'm pretty good at having stuff to work on. I have visited there in the past. I think it's a decent setup. Uh, I think there's a lot of cool stuff on there. Um, yeah. I'm going to try and do some more writing prompts, uh, style stuff in the near future. Uh, if you've been tuning in kind of on a semi-regular basis, uh, I've been having this, I've been learning. I've been learning about streaming. I've been learning what I want about streaming. Uh, I ask people a lot about why they stream, what they get out of it, what I'm trying to get out of it. Um, so I've been adapting. I started this off. I started this whole thing off with like very structured episodes, heavy content, uh, like academic content, uh, theories, stuff like that. And, uh, I realized that that was awesome. Like, I liked doing that. But I was discussing with my friend Lucas uh, at the time, and we were saying, you know, you need... You need to do some... You need to pick, like, another day of the week, do, like, an afternoon thing, expand your audience, get in front of the camera, do less structured stuff uh, on a different day or whatever, uh, which is kind of how I started Midweekly Fun, which is what I call my intermittent, inter intermittent uh, Wednesday random streams. Uh, so yeah, uh, but as the process of this has kind of gone on, I've realized that I think as much as I'm enjoying working on this short story and I am enjoying it, uh, I think after I'm done this one, I'm going to spend some time doing some more like writing experiments, uh, one shot interesting things focused on a specific topic. Um, kind of take a, in a lot of ways, take a, uh, take a page from my artist friend's books where when they're doing studies and stuff, we're saying, well, we're going to do feet studying today. It's like, okay, cool. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do dialogue studies or I'm going to do writing prompts or I'm going to, and when I say writing prompts, I mean like, I'm going to try and like do like five writing prompts in an hour or like something like that. Like, challenge myself, challenge what I'm trying to do, work on specific things, do writing studies. Um, yeah, I, I mean, that's my plan. I'm going to finish this first. I want to finish this. I've been working on it for probably two months now, uh, only on stream. So I do want to finish this. Uh, but then, yeah, I think I'm going to take a little bit of time to do some writing experiment episodes. And then uh, I'm going to do comics, I think. I want to do a comic. I want to do comic scripting on screen. Because uh, I think people will get a kick out of it. I think it'll be a little different. Um, there's, there's some novelists and stuff on here. There's some screenwriters. There's not a lot of comic scripters. Uh, other than Fancy. But I don't know if he streams that a ton. And if you're not, you should check out, uh, if you're not following, you should check out, oh god, I misspelled this wrong, it's gonna be hard. Johnny, if this doesn't work, fix it, please. Yeah, that makes so much more sense. Yeah. Uh, but I wonder how much scripting and stuff they're going to do on screen. Like, that's the kind of thing that I was thinking about. 
Because I don't draw, so there's no chance that I'm going to be drawing the comic. Uh, but I want to kind of show comic scripting and what comic scripting is like. Um, and I'd also love to do a short film. I kind of want to do a short film on screen as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's do this. What do you mean? <laughs> You're watching me right now. How would how would writing a short film on screen be any different <laughs> than doing this? How do you spell plowed? I thought I spelled it right. Yeah. Hell, I, I would love, I would love to film a short film on stream. That'd be really cool. I just talk to the basement about doing something like that. I mean, yeah, you're right. It would be you, it would be you recording yourself recording a thing. Uh, but at the same time, if, if it was a, it would have to be a very short film and it'd have to be a certain specific style. Like you couldn't do a lot of location shots and, and like, uh, certain things, but yeah, I'll consult my expert. I think it'd be really cool. Uh, it'd be hard. It, it'll be hard to do. It might be something, it might be something that would be better to do for my YouTube channel. Again, like the, uh, like the audiobook, where um, rather than doing it live, which I think would be kind of maybe, dis which could be disruptive, uh, doing it, um, yeah, doing it in kind of a recorded setting where like, you know, we can break it down. We could we could show the, the whole process. I think that'd be hella cool. I think that's how you spell it. I think I was spelling it the American way. There we go. Yeah, I agree, Ronnie. Working outside is super hard, but it is hella fun. It's also night. Like the cool thing about working on set is it's it's never the same thing. Um, it's different every day. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff going on. There's a lot of creativity bouncing around. It's like you know you're you're in a scene or, um, or like you have to solve a problem and you don't know how. <laughs> 
but you don't have time to like time or, or time or resources to like wait till another day to do it like Yeah, I haven't been on set in a few years. It's something I like to do more. It's one of those things where, like, I would like to do it, but honestly, with my work schedule, I can't. Uh, I'd have to take time off to do it, which sucks. Uh, though, you know, if I started freelancing more or doing some of that stuff, I would make the time to, to do more, more set stuff. I think it's important. Yeah. All right, you're uh you're a crazy makeup artist. I forgot about that. What do you mean not crazy? Stop doubting your skills. Stop doubting your skills. There's a bunch of words that I'm thinking of to describe this arm. The problem is, is they all sound very science fiction-y to me. And I'm not really sure how I want to deal with that.
Enhanced, maybe? Maybe. Kind of like the idea of fixed. It's not too bad. Eighteen forty four of five thousand. What does that even mean? Welcome back, Willow. I think it's actually gonna be 5,000. I would aim for anything above 2,500. 2,500 would be kind of a minimum uh, acceptability for me, but above 2,500 is fine. I realize that I didn't describe anything about the horses in here. And I think I might want to at least mention it. Horses? Why is my phone beeping? Huh, thinking. 14 words in two hours. Nah, I had a lot of structure stuff that needed to happen. 
Uh, so that's fine. Interesting, interesting. Okay, cool. <laughs> roll a die. Number them one to whatever, roll a die and do one. Structure works so much better for me. Oops. I find it really weird that um, I can't add this after the space. It's odd. Maybe if I double space.
Guild Wars, man. Such a time sucker. Good game, though. I enjoyed it. Uh, I haven't played it in a while, though. Yeah, man. If you want to be productive, uh, sometimes you got to make sacrifices. And if that's video game time, then that's video game time. If that's something else, then that's something else. But, um, yeah, if, if you want to, if you want to make your skills better, if you want to improve, you gotta, you gotta spend time working at it. There you go. There you go. I mean, if it's just a, if it's just a series of studies, you could actually like uh, or studies that you uh, do on a regular basis, you could actually just make that a list and just roll on it every time you uh, you need something to do.
That sucks, bro. <laughs> that sucks. A ton. I hate. I hate uh, having more. Yeah, you can't have more than one monitor on a laptop. It totally sucks. You gotta get yourself uh, one of the monitors that you can daisy chain. So you can plug your you plug your Cintiq into your uh, into your monitor and your monitor into your computer. Do Cintiqs use HDMI ports or uh, Display ports, or neither, or both? DVI maybe. I don't even know. I'm just curious. I assume it has an, a secondary plug for like USB or something to to deal with the pressure sensitivity, or is it all through the HDMI? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. The gobbles appear. <laughs> yeah that's fair it's all good bro do your thing I fully support I fully support wanting to get better and doing the practice to get there at least you're doing something legit unlike Drani who's just painting her nails Tisk, tisk. You didn't say you were doing nail art. You said you were painting your nails. There's a difference.
Sounds like it. Sounds like that would take forever. Yeah. Need your hands to do stuff again. Damn, Johnny. Dedication. Do sports. Let's do sports and tail. Are you going to do a sport? Or are you just going to work out? <laughs> You paint your nails right before you're doing sports that seems counter <laughs> counterintuitive
<laughs> okay, question. No problem, buddy. Nice. Nice, Ryan. That's hilarious. What's up, Eventua?
Sure. Hit me up, man. What do you need? I'm happy to help. Okay. So you're having issues with the middle. Okay. Sure, I follow. I follow. Sounds good so far. That's your problem? That you don't know if you should combine them or not? I'm gonna save this scene for tomorrow. I'm gonna write a couple of details down on the side here though. <laughs> I, I totally know the feeling. I totally know the feeling. So is that the issue? Is that the issue that... Uh... So what's the issue? Tell me what the issue is. I have thoughts, but tell me what the issue is. So my thoughts are that, um, my, well, my initial thought is that if you're going to do that arc at all, it should be the second arc of three. Um, because I don't think that it fits into your climax. So unless you're building tension using this tournament, it shouldn't go right before like the most tense moment. Uh, so it should probably be somewhere in the second. I don't know if that's doable based on your second arc. But I feel like that would be better if you were going to do it. Um, that being said, I kind of feel like you could probably just cut it. Like if it's that drastically different from the rest of your, your story, like tone wise, it's probably unnecessary. Oh, okay, I just assumed there was three. Bye, Johnny. I'll talk to you later. Okay, in which case, having a third is not is not nearly as much of a problem. 
but yeah, if it's if it's not tonally okay, if it doesn't fit what you're trying to do with the story, I wouldn't do it. Uh, and I can't I can't decide that for you. You you have to figure that out on your own, unfortunately. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe combining them would solve the issue where you'd get to do some of the cool moments without having to, like, have an actual arc about it. Um, that's a hard question. It's one of those things that, like, I feel like I'd need to see it. I'd need to see, like, what the outline looks like in order to judge. Uh, but it's cool. You don't have to send me that if you don't want. But uh, yeah, I think it, I think the tone matters. I think uh, yeah. I mean, if it's book ended by two super serious scenes, sometimes having a light, like I was talking a little bit about this earlier, sometimes having a light uh, arc really helps. Um, you know, it breaks up the the tense moments, and you need those breaks, right? Um, I don't know if you were here when I was talking about it. It's a few episodes ago, but uh, like a plot is like this, right? You need you need to have moments of downtime where people can uh, adjust. It can't all be all tense all the time. That being said, if I mean, if there's some interesting moments, it's possible that you could figure out a way to rewrite them into other arcs. Um, like have the tournament going on in the background, maybe like it's something they do for fun or whatever, like. I think there's, yeah, I think there's stuff you can do. Oh, and I guess that's kind of the other the other point that I would I would make about that. If the tournament arc doesn't add drama to the story, then there's really no point for it to exist. Like if it's not saying something about the overall conflict, or the character's progression, or anything like that, it's really unnecessary. So yeah, that's kind of what I think about it, if that helps.
Yeah, see, exactly. Like, uh, like that second and third arc seems super unnecessary to me. Uh, from that description. I mean, maybe not. It depends what you mean by team. I just assumed the team was the tournament, but... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I definitely think you should cut that third arc. Uh, other than that, the second one's up for you to decide. It does sound a little... Well... Bane of Writers. This sounds like something else that I read one time. Uh, it sounds a little bit like Ender's Game. Uh, not that that's a problem, but, you know. Just, just kind of what it sounds like. That's all I'm saying. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I don't think if it's important. I don't. I think if it's not important to the plot, it doesn't really need to exist. Um, and yeah, you're kind of getting fooled by that weird sports anime thing. Uh, they do that a lot in anime, where they'll have filler arcs. Um, I don't like it. Sometimes they last forever. <laughs> Sometimes it's okay. It's okay to break it up a little bit, but when they spend a lot of time on one of those filler arcs, that's when you kind of get have issues. Maybe, uh, <laughs> man, all those beach arcs. Why are there always a beach arc? It doesn't matter. It's freaking like, I'm reading, anyway, <laughs> I'm reading, uh, Blue Exorcist, I think it's called. Anyway, I watched the anime. The anime was really good. Um, I'm reading the manga now and they're on a beach and it's weird. It's weird because it started out as beach arc, but then it's not really beach arc. I don't know, but whatever. You get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. I mean, pretty much, pretty much, almost always. But yeah, again, I'm okay with it if it's like one to two chapters, you know, like they do a thing, they go to the beach for vacation, whatever, but it's when, it's when they last like months or, or like it's 10 chapters. It's like, really? Unless of course there's a summer vacation arc in which, uh, there's actual character progression. Cause I've seen some of those. I don't know. I might be overanalyzing beach scenes in manga. <laughs> totally riffing on this myth a little bit. Yeah, I figured it would. No problem. Happy to help.
That's a subtle reference. I like it though. Keep punctuating it with like moments of silence. Interesting detail. I need to fix that. Uh, at the edge of the forest, no. that spell check color a little bit more visible. minutes left. I'm not going to make 70 words in five minutes, I don't think.
No, I got it. We're good. Five more. I got there. Ah, that's a weird place to end it. But yeah, we're gonna end it there for today. Five twelve, yay! We're reaching kind of the minimum, my projected minimum uh, for this story. I'm gonna adjust this because I think five thousand is unreasonable. We're gonna go down to uh, three thousand. No, we're gonna say thirty five hundred. I cut a bunch of scenes, so I don't think 5,000 makes sense anymore. Uh, it's a little bit shorter. I think it's stronger, though. And who knows? It might not actually end up being any shorter. I still have a bunch of this backstory to write out. I still have an entire aftermath epilogue to write. I think there's details missing in a few of these that'll need to be fleshed out. Um, assuming I don't have to work Saturday. Um, yeah, I'm pretty much getting to the end there. Uh, so let me finish my thought. Uh, I don't think I have to work Saturday. It was kind of up in the air. Uh, if I'm not, I'm going to do, uh, if I'm not working, which I'll find out probably tomorrow, uh, I will do a full, like, uh, I'll sit down and, and mark where I need to flesh out on stream. Uh, kind of give it all filling. Other than that, tomorrow I'm going to finish, I'm going to work on the Aftermath epilogue. Uh, I think that's going to be the main focus. Um, but yeah, sounds good. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for me for today. Uh, this is the end of day four of the drafting week, working on Fear the Siren. Um, I will be back tomorrow, streaming from 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, same as I've been doing all week. This is not my normal schedule, for the record. I usually only stream on Sunday nights. I work a full-time job, so I don't have time during the week. I'm on vacation right now, though, so I can do my thing. Um, so, yeah. Other than that, uh, my name is Brendan, and this has been Accidental Origin, your weekly writing web show. Blah, blah, blah. Your weekly writing web show appearing daily for this week only. Um, I'll be back tomorrow, guys. Come hang out. Thanks for coming. Bye.